Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene.com, Machine Embroidery Art. This is my fifth tutorial in advanced digitizing using PE Design 10. I call it advanced because we're doing a project from start to finish, but this is actually going to be a short and easy project. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go to my image tab and obtain my backdrop or image and there's our little uh, image icon, the folder with the flower. I have also placed mine on the quick access toolbar as explained in lesson one. So we're going to uh, select it from a file. You can also get it from a scanner, but we want it from, I've placed this image in a file and I obtained this image on Google, Google Images, uh, as explained in Lesson 31, Obtaining Images. And it is a rubber ducky. My sister-in-law has a rubber ducky motif in one of her bathrooms and I thought I'd make her some towels for Christmas. With my finger on the shift key, I'm going to grab a corner handle and I'm going to crease it equally in all directions and uh, by clicking outside that gets rid of the handles and I don't have to worry about it moving around. If you do need to resize it again you can always go back to your image tab and click on modify image or you can right click anywhere on the page and click on modify images but that's about the right size. The first thing I'm going to do I think I'm going to work from the front and go back because uh, these colors are so close it's going to be hard for me to see this little wing area if I do the backdrop yellow first. So let's go to the home tab and I'm going to get a little closer up here and I'm going to go to the shapes tool and use the manual punch. Now you know as I've told you in other lessons that I always like to start my manual punches with a running stitch. Now when I go to the curved, the second one's going to be the bottom. So you know how I like to go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And I'm going to go back and do a running or feed stitch. But I'm not going to go back and forth on here. I'm going to push the uh, the keyboard shortcut with the letter V on your keyboard. So I'm going to push the letter V and send out another. And that's going to be the last one. Then by pushing on the keyboard the letter X and that is the shortcut for the curve stitch as you can read down below. So I'll push the letter X and that's going to be my bottom, top, bottom. And notice how I overlap them a little bit, and you know why probably by now. That's because, hold on, by right clicking you can undo the last stitch. That's because the push and pull is going to pull those stitches in. Now I'm going to keyboard the letter V as in Victor, and I'm going to do one more that's going to be my top. I'll push the letter X for the curved manual punch tool. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. Double click. And that's close enough. Now I don't want that color. I want that to be yellow. But we'll leave it green for right now so we can see it when we do the uh, other part. Next we're going to do the, uh, the rubber ducky. And we're going to do that with a closed curve tool. Now I don't want this zigzag outline around it so I'm going to push not sewn <clears throat> and I want this color to be yellow. So I'll start about here. Now getting around here, I could do a bunch of close little curve stitches or I could switch to a, uh, a straight tool. I'll show you when we get down to the bottom. Okay, so instead of uh, doing a bunch of little small curvy things, I'm just going to go to a straight tool. I can do it by uh, going to close straight line, 
but as you, if you read below, it says shortcut key Z. So I'm going to push the letter Z, and then I'm going to push the letter X to go back to a curve tool. When I digitize, my left hand is always on the keyboards Z, X, C, and V. That's because the manual punches and the closed uh, fills you can switch between uh, sharp lines and curved lines without having to go back and forth. And if you forget what they are, every time you go to the tool, it'll have a little drop down that shows you uh, that it what the tells you what the shortcut is. Double click. Okay. So now we'll put this on top of there and. I'll close them together. We can turn it to yellow now. All right. So see, that gives it a little bit of dimension when you look at it in realistic preview. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is this uh, little duck mouth. And I'm going to do it more or less like uh, I did with the uh, tone on tone, yellow on yellow. I'm going to first do the outline of the duck's bill and I'll start with a little run and stitch and that's going to be my top I'm going to keyboard the letter X and that will be my bottom top bottom And I'm going to keyboard the letter V to get a runner out again. Keyboard the letter X. Now my tops and bottoms are backwards because I started. I'll right click to undo the last stitch. Double click. Okay, and I don't want that to be orange. I want that to be like a vermilion. I think that's that one there. Oh no, that's, uh, let's do this one. There, yeah, we got vermilion. Oh, you have to select it first. That helps. Now, then the last thing I'm going to do around the mouth is just with a plain old curved fill. Okay, so let's open this up, open up the pieces. And I want that fill to come before the other uh, uh, dimensional or, or uh, 3D effect I'm trying to get. Let's see what I, you see what I'm trying to do there? Okay, let's go back to the stitches. And the last thing we need to do is just a little eye. And we can just use a circle tool for that. And I'll move it there. Make that white. And uh, then I'm going to just do some uh, uh, eyelashes and his pupil. And I'm going to do that with the manual punch on my shapes tool. So let's send out the runner. This is getting hard to see. I better get close in here. get the feeder and that's going to be my top I'm going to keyboard the letter X change it into the curved manual punch that's going to be the bottom top top bottom top I need to undo some of those stitches okay bottom top okay keyboard the letter V Keyboard the letter X, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Keyboard the letter V. Keyboard the letter X, that will be my bottom, top, bottom. And you notice I'm covering up my run and stitch as I go down. 
and then keyboard the letter V again and I'm gonna go down to the bottom and keyboard the letter X that's gonna be my bottom Now I don't see a real strong outline around this eye but embroidery digitizing it's really an art of distortion you have to kind of fill in what's not there or make something up just to convey your uh, image sometimes and double click oh we don't want that color let's select that and we're gonna make that black there we go so one thing I want to check before I uh, do anything else I'm gonna get my measure and you know I always work in millimeters and any good digitizer works with millimeters and you just have to get used to thinking that way if you plan to stick with this hobby for any length of time um, and in this little corner that's where your little millimeter or inches you can use inches or millimeters but we want these stitches to be at least one millimeter okay they're not they're not uh, wide enough so I'm gonna have to give them a little more pull compensation because you see 0.67 down here that's not gonna be wide enough so let's go ahead and select Oh, you know what? These somehow or another, when you change the color, the running stitches sometimes will still be in the the. Whoops! Uh, with my finger on the control key, I'm going to select all these segments, and I'm going to turn them to black. Okay, so now I want to se select all these narrow uh, manual punches, and I'm going to give it some under sewing attributes we'll give it one two three three now that may look like it's going to be too fat but I promise you those stitches are going to pull in and it's going to look just fine so let's go back to home and we'll go to our uh, zoom all tool and it's telling you it's going to look like pretty much like this when you finish so that's about it uh, I could uh, do a few other tweaks like right here you see this little line here let's find out where the start and it starts and stops there I think I'm going to have it start and stop at the highest point so we don't have any gap sometimes when the material comes together you know, you'll see a gap in it so uh, well now it's just it's just going from here to here Let's see if we can get that. Get rid of it by doing this. There we go. Now we got rid of all those little lines where the material, when it's, as you see, when it sews uh, on one side and then it sews on the other, uh, and that sometimes will capture, especially towels, will capture that terry in the middle. We could also do some more things like uh, remove the overlaps in the eye, but that's such a small eye, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. So that's about it for the rubber duck. Kathleen McKee of Aline.com, Machine Embroidery Art.